Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we're unboxing some spiders. I got this package in the mail from Nate over at Micro Wilderness. He said he wanted to send me a couple tarantulas and I happily obliged. So huge shout out to Micro Wilderness for this gift. Now if you enjoy these extra videos on Thursday or just unboxing videos in general, make sure you hit that like button. It means a lot and helps get the word out about the channel. All right, let's, let's get to unboxing. Oh, very cool. I got some stickers. Got a uh, nice little micro wilderness sticker here. Got a couple of them. And a nice little business card. And a note that says, today's theme, red. Enjoy, Richard. Nate. Then a list of what's in here. Packed up nice and securely. All right, it looks like we have a Brachypelma erratum. It's looking pretty large. A uh, Salmopius erminia. And a uh, Brachypelma smithy. Ex anatha. Anitha. 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 A N N I T H A. Ex anatha. It's a true Brachypelma smithy. It's not the Brachypelma homori, though they look very similar. So I say we start with the smallest and let's unbox this Brachypelma smithy. So for my slings right now, I'm using these tiny little plastic containers. Uh, they're like honeycomb containers, or they also kind of look like what you put an electric guitar pickup in. Uh, these I actually picked up uh, at the NARBC when I was at the Fear Not Tarantulas booth. Tanya had a whole bunch of them, sent me home with some. So that's kind of what I've been using. A little bit of sphagnum moss and a piece of cork bark and just cocoa fiber. And uh, let's, let's, let's just do it. I really like these little plastic uh, shipping containers. There we go. Look at that tiny little guy. All right, let's put it in. Looks healthy, looks happy, looks plump. We'll give a little spray of water and put the lid on it. Up next is a Salmopius erminia. Now this is an arboreal tarantula, and I wasn't quite sure the size of it. He didn't, he didn't tell me that. You can see its container's a little bit larger, but I don't know what size a tarantula is. So I've got a little spiderling kind of enclosure, arboreal enclosure. It's essentially just like a spice container. You can get these like at the grocery store filled with pepper or cinnamon or whatever, but you can also find them online for sale, just empty. Uh, they got a nice little lid. Uh, you could pop off, I would usually duct tape half of it, kind of get it sealed up and then put some holes, just drill a bunch of holes for uh, ventilation. So I've got that, if it's a sling, hopefully that'll work. If not, I've got my uh, acrylic arboreal enclosure set up with just some substrate and a cork bark. Now I know the Salmopius genus likes to burrow, especially a lot of slings. So I made sure to put plenty of substrate in there for them. Substrate, for those that don't like the way I say substrate. <laughs> One thing, especially with these smaller spiderlings, is you want to make sure that the ventilation holes in the enclosure are not too wide, because uh, the tarantula can squeeze through pretty much anything and get its carapace through. And this is like right on the line. I think it would be okay, but it's it's really close, and I am going to err on the side of caution. So uh, this enclosure was really set up for something a little bit larger than this guy. So I'm gonna go get a, uh, a dram vial. We'll set that up real quick. Be right back. 
All right, no dram files, but this, this, this is why I'm always saying be prepared. In fact, I did a whole video, top 10 tips uh, for tarantula keeping, all about being prepared, and this is why. Sometimes you'll get a tarantula that you think is a little smaller than it actually is, or maybe it's a little bigger than it actually is. So the enclosure you have set up just isn't gonna work. So it's always good to have a wide variety of enclosures available kind of just in storage that you can reach to if, if you're in a pinch. Now I didn't have any dram vials, but I did have this little guy. This is usually what I use for uh, spiderlings, uh, like terrestrial spiderlings, but I just, I think it's gonna work for what we need right now. It'll have plenty of height to kind of hang out and web, but I know it's gonna probably spend most of its time burrowed down at the base of that cork bark. And I'm gonna blame COVID, it's COVID-19's fault. I couldn't get to the pet store. In fact, this whole video will be about being unprepared to accept a shipment, but luckily having plenty of back stock and like regular stuff just kind of shoved into a closet or in a garage to save you. So let's, let's rehouse this guy. Right, and that's probably where it's gonna stay. It's got a little bit of uh, sphagnum moss in there it can use as well as plenty of substrate so it can burrow down, make its dirt curtains, feel nice, safe, and secure. And as you can see on this enclosure, it has very small ventilation holes. I made those using the smallest drill bit I can find at the, at the hardware store, but it's small enough so that I don't have to worry about that sling being able to escape. And following this theme of not being ready, I knew he was sending me a large Brocky Pelma, and this entire time since talking to him and it's shipping and all that, I just, in my mind was like, yeah, I've got this enclosure over in the garage, it'll be perfect. It wasn't until I got home and started filming this video, went to go grab that enclosure and realized I don't have it. It is being used for a scorpion. I think I put uh, an emperor scorpion or something like that in there. And I couldn't go to the pet store because of all the COVID-19 stuff. The pet store closed like at six and it's, I don't know, nine o'clock at night. So unfortunately this is, uh, gonna have to go into a temporary enclosure until I can go to the pet store in the next day or two. But what I do have uh, luckily stashed away in my kind of spare enclosure <laughs> department, plenty of these like plastic exoterra critter keepers stored away over in the garage. This one's, a, I think it was a breeding box. That's what they called it. I don't even know if they're still available for sale. Uh, if it is, it'll probably be linked to my Amazon storefront, which you can find in the description of this video. But it will work for what we're doing today. It'll be a nice home, plenty of room, uh, but I got it set up pretty basically. It's got some hide, some substrate, a water dish, and like, that's it. <laughs> no real decorations, a little bit of sphagnum moss, but I just, I like putting sphagnum moss in everything. Functionally, it's a great enclosure, not knocking them at all, but I like to be able to see my tarantulas. I like to have them on display. And this type of enclosure just doesn't really lend itself to that. It's got these side ventilation slats that kind of obscure the view. So this is just for necessity, I'm just to have them in here for a day or two. So I get like a nice enclosure ready for it. But this is the Brachypelma erratum. And I don't remember what the common name is. So I gotta look it up real quick. The Mexican fire knee or something. Mexican flame knee. All these like Mexican Brachypelmas, the, the flame knee, the fire leg, the blood leg. They're so similar. <laughs> Not the tarantulas, but they're common names. And they all get mixed up. So it, it, can, it can be a, a pain. And I believe he said this one was a male. So I'm going to uh, maybe hopefully get a female sometime in the future. Uh, the other beer autumn I have is still a very small sling. I think it's like maybe around an inch or so. So it won't be ready. But maybe we'll get a female in the near future and can mate him and uh, possibly get an egg sack. I'm very excited to see this guy.
but a huge thank you. <laughs> thank you a lot for this. This is very cool. And I guess we're going to have to do a Brocky Pelma Erratum Tarantula Tuesday in the very near future. So be sure to stay tuned for that. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. It all helps get the word out about the channel and is very much appreciated. Now, if you enjoy these unboxing videos and this whole Thursday vlog thing I kind of got going on right now, make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you got any other ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, throw those out there as well. Links to Micro Wilderness will be down in the description. That's just, you just hit the like show more or see more or something like that, and that right underneath the video. A lot of people can't find it, but it's it's there. It's like right there. It's like right there, you'll, you'll find it. I'll put a pin in a comment too. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. So hopefully I will see you this Tuesday. I, I, don't, I don't know how to end the Thursday videos yet. Uh, we'll figure it out.